Hello world, my name is Wilfred Desponde, and in this video we are going to talk about raw image processing. So, uh, here's a quick overview of some of the stuff we're going to cover in this uh, section. We're going to cover things with image representation and color spaces, which in other words, you know, how do we represent an image in memory and, and such. And we're going to move on to what brightness and contrast are, what the, you know, how those two are related. We'll get into image blending and how that actually relates to brightness and contrast. Finally, we get, we'll get to drawing things on images like uh, rectangles, circles, and other shapes. But first, let's get to the critical question of what are images even? So images can be something like this picture of a basket of kittens, for example. You know, but you know, everything that's on our computer is stored in a series of ones and zeros. So how do we represent this basket of kittens as some other representation and we can use a mathematical structure called a matrix for that. So on the left we have the image of the basket of kittens and on the right is a representation of the image on the left and this is how we're going to be dealing with uh, these sort of images in OpenCV. They're going to be stored as matrices and we're going to be able to do all sorts of um, computations on these matrices and so each individual element that you see here each each one of these is actually a pixel so v11 represents the very very top left pixel and this vmn represents the very bottom right pixel and uh, you'll, you'll see that OpenCV actually has its own um, coordinate space and it's actually very similar to the way that we set up you know, a matrix. And it's also important to note that each one of these these elements is actually not just a single number. In fact, it can even be a vector itself. And that's kind of what this R to the C power sort of stands for. It stands for that this line here is basically saying that each element, the I in, you know, the i -th uh, i row j column is itself not necessarily a single a single element and we're going to get to more about what this c is uh, in just a second so we have this data um, that OpenCV uses to represent images they're called matrices but we actually need a little bit more information and that's what's stored in the header of a matrix so there's kind of two parts there's the data and there's the header and the header stores information like how many rows is this particular image, how many columns is it, or in other words, it's the dimensions of the image, these two. And then this type is what corresponds to this C here. And then, you know, there's probably some other miscellaneous data, but these are really the big three, the dimensions of the image and this type. And this is how OpenCV represents its matrix types. And um, this is kind of like a for your reference slide. We don't really get too much into this, but if you ever see this um, when you're dealing with OpenCV code, you'll at least understand what it is. So the first is the number of bits, and here are the possible options here. The next is the signedness, and that's going to be either unsigned, signed, or floating point. Then finally, there's this number of channels, and there's you know C1, C2, C3, C4. So I've been talking a lot about this channels and what the C is, and we're going to see what this actually is and so here is what I mean by the number of channels so the number of channels corresponds to the number of possible color values there are so for example for one channel there's only one color value and that color space what we call it is grayscale right so you only need one number to represent a grayscale uh, value or a pixel in a grayscale image, you can represent it by just one particular color value here. And this has a range associated with it. It's from 0 to 255, which total is 256 possible values. Uh, and there's not really anything for two channels since we don't really use it that much. Uh, next, for three channels, this is where we get into a bit more familiar, ter familiar territory with uh, RGB images, red, green, and blue. And each one of these, R, G, and B, have to be within 0 to 255. And this means that 
for one pixel, you need three values to properly define the pixel in um, this RGB color space, right? So each pixel has to have a, a red, a green, and a blue component. Similarly, there's a different color space, um, HSVU, HSV hue saturation value, and you know, really these two are just different ways of representing the same color. You know, in some cases this might be a bit easier uh, to work with, in some cases this might be a bit easier to work with. They're just different color spaces, and we're going to see how we can actually change between two different color spaces, and this becomes useful um, a bit later on when we get into things like um, like thresholding or edge detection where the input can't be an RGB image, it has to be a grayscale image. So we need a way to convert from RGB color space to grayscale color space and I can show you how to do that really you know, easily in, in OpenCV. Now there is a four channel there are four channel color spaces. Two of them are ARGB which is alpha red, green, blue, and then there's this CY, CMYK, which is cyan, magenta, yellow, and key, or in other words, black. And uh, for CMYK, each one of these has to be between 0 and 255. Um, however, for, RG, for ARGB, the alpha value has to be between 0 and 100. And this is actually because you know the alpha level is supposed to represent the transparency, right? So if it's zero, then the it's this pixel value is completely transparent. In which case, the RGB doesn't really matter because it's the pixel is transparent anyway. Um, if it is a hundred, then this ARGB essentially just becomes RGB. So that's kind of um, the different color spaces, and I finally explained to you what channels actually actually means. So let's take a look at you know an example of a three channel RGB image. So it's gonna kind of look something like this is how we can represent it in uh, in on a computer for example. You know our eyes see these as being pixels but the computer sees this matrix where in each little cell here is a is a vector of length three. Right so in this first top left cell there's and R, a G, and a B, you know, and in all the cells there's going to be an R, a G, and a B ranging from 0 to 255. And this is what we call a three-channel RGB image. Now if I had, you know, something else like a, like a four-channel ARGB image, then each one of these would have four, uh, four numbers in here ranging from well, the alpha goes from zero to one hundred, and the other ones are going to have to go from zero to two fifty-five. Now, I could also have a three-channel HSV image, in which case these would still have three values, but they would be, but they mean something different. So, this matrix formation is great and all, but in memory, how do we even represent these? Well, we kind of flatten them. So because we're dealing with images and they have like a fixed dimension size, what we do is we flatten them. So in this case, this is, suppose this is like a one channel uh, image, in which case it would be a grayscale. If this were a one channel thing, then uh, what would happen is we would just store them by rows first. So this whole first row would be stored in memory, and then we move on to the next row, and the next row, and we keep going until the very last element is going to be V m comma n you know at this particular index because we start at zero so it wouldn't be exactly this but um, but anyway this is how we store the uh, the images in in memory and so in this slide what I have is I have a single channel grayscale matrix and it's represented exactly how um, we would think it's represented we have you know, it goes from 0 to m1 x1 times m minus 1. And each one of these is just a single grayscale value. And we just line them up by the row. Now suppose we have something that's not a single channel. Suppose we have an RGB image. Well, then we have to store it. What we do is for each element, we store it as BGR um, backwards. And there's another lot of different reasons why we do this you know 
part of the reason is we, this is just historically it's been done this way, so we're just doing it now. So we store it BGR for this V11, and then we move on to the next element and go BGR, and we keep going until we finish that row, and then we move on to the next row, and then we keep going down until we finish up the the matrix. So this is kind of how we represent uh, the images, either a triple channel or a single channel in memory, and you know this works the same for like a you know for the um, the HSV or for the ARGB they're just stored similar like this where for the first element you store all of its components and then for the second element you store all of its components and you keep going on fill it by the rows and then um, fill up the entire matrix so that's enough talking about um, the, the theory behind this so uh, in the next video what we're going to do is I'm actually going to we're going to open up uh, Python and we are going to I'm going to show you how we load images, how we save images, and how we can do uh, color space conversions. So I hope to see you all in the next video.